Welcome along to another opposition preview, the show that brings you the lowdown of Saints next opponents. This weekend, Saints are back in FA Cup action, and it's a case of deja vu once again as we visit the Hawthorns for the second time in just a few weeks and our bid to reach the quarterfinals. So uh, with me once again is Josh from the Baggies podcast, the Boyncast. Hi, mate. How's it going? Thanks for joining us again. Yeah, thanks for having me back on. Well, I'll touch upon our, our previous meeting, you know, sort of still fresh in memory, only a couple of weeks ago. From our point of view, you know, much needed win uh, with some excellent goals, contender for goal of the month for Lamina. I mean, but how much did that hurt your bid to stay up in the league and to consider also what a Monday night's result 3-0 down at Chelsea? Yeah, I, I think uh, it's, it's one of those where the kind of just how much kind of the Southampton result um, again, obviously against you has cost us was kind of the, the effect of that was almost delayed until this weekend because obviously we played after everyone else and we were in a position ultimately after watching kind of everyone else play where we're seven points adrift um, before we've even kicked a ball obviously at Stanford Bridge so it's you know hugely kind of psychological damaging I think a lot of Albion fans and certainly Adam Pardew has been really kind of emphasising the fact that this run of home games that we've got, we're playing the likes of, obviously, we played you, lost, but we've got teams like uh, Huddersfield, Swansea, still to come at the Hawthorns. Um, so to kind of not pick up anything from that, from that against you, which is obviously a, t a team that we would have all marked to get three points against, is a, is a bitter blow. And, and, and time, it looks like, uh, is very much running out for us in the, in the division. Mm, and, um, well, this weekend could serve a bit of a respite. The FA Cup does serve a bit of a... Uh, sometimes a welcome distraction, but I mean, for me, ultimately, what we're looking for is a bit of momentum, a bit of confidence to build upon. But is it a welcome distraction for uh, for West Brom, or is it a case of just solely focusing on the Premier League? Sack this one off. Which would you say is your priority? Um, I think a lot of Albion fans are pretty resigned to the fact that we're going down. So I, I think there's been a lot of chat. Certainly, I was at the Chelsea game yesterday talking to a few Albion fans, and there was a lot of chat saying, "Yeah, but most people would be happy for us to go down if we've got that FA Cup to you know kind of hang our hat on." Um, and I do think actually the team in, in the competition, you know, we've played Exeter, but obviously we went to Anfield as well and won. We've been playing with far more kind of freedom. And I think that just the kind of the lack of necessity to win, the lack of pressure on the competition has actually kind of been really, really helpful for us. So I think it's just a, it's a nice opportunity for Albion fans to potentially just enjoy a weekend of football, which we've, which we've not done for a very long time. Down in the dumps. And I never seem to speak to any positive West Brom fans, but uh, a Monday night result uh, at Chelsea, a player whom sort of we were fearing for the FA Cup, you know, and our trip a few weeks ago, the Orphans, Daniel Sturridge. It's yeah. written in the script. He goes off after three minutes. It's unbelievable. Record time this time. But how much is he going to be? How much of a miss is he going to be on Saturday? Are there any other injury concerns? Um, I think apart from Sturridge, we're pretty much back at full strength. But it is a bit of a, you know, it's a hammer blow to bring in someone like Sturridge to the club and, and obviously... The, the, the kind of goal record that he's got and you look at it on paper and you think yeah this is the kind of man the, the kind of signing that can really kind of really put us back into contention to send a division so to lose him is obviously uh, a massive hammer blow but I think it's been so typical of our kind of luck with injuries this season because you, you look at our injury list you know Nasser Chadley has barely kicked the ball for us this season and was crucial last season James Morrison again another really kind of creative force uh, and we've been we've kind of really fallen victim to a couple of really uh, key injuries in a couple of key positions this season. And you know you've mentioned sort of your unlucky uh, your luck off the pitch uh, on the pitch even, but today news is broke off the pitch. West Brom announced the uh, sacking of chief executive and the chairman by their Chinese owner, um, and and citing uh, poor results and need for a drastic change. I mean, what have you made of all this? It's it's bizarre, and in a lot of ways, I don't really quite know what to make of it yet. Um, in terms of the on-the-pitch impact, I don't see that it's going to change much because I think Alan Pardew's job is very much safe, it, it looks like. It looks like the kind of the Chinese owner is kind of just using a bit of strong arm action, maybe flexing his muscles a bit. And he's obviously, he feels the chairman um, should carry the can for, for the way that the games, you know, the team's been going for the past few weeks. It's a bizarre move. I don't necessarily see what the end game is because we're not bringing anyone in to replace him until the end of the season. Um, but... It's, it's a weird one. Obviously, the club are feeling that some kind of drastic action needs to be taken, but don't feel like it's the right step to, to sack the manager. And obviously, the chairman carries the can. Very, very bizarre. I mean, we, we've got Chinese owners ourselves, and we, you know, some of the fans could perhaps look at West Brom as an example for the Chinese owner to to set, you know, his standard up. And you know, a lot of the fans around Saints are, are very much unhappy at the moment. I mean, do, do you think that the off the pitch antics will have any effect? Uh, for Saturday's game, what's your prediction? Uh, I don't. Look, I don't think it's going to change the game. I actually think we're going to. I think we'll probably win, 
um, on Saturday. I thought, you know, we're not playing in the league. It's a bit of freedom. So, yeah, I, th- I think the players will be relieved to just kind of be playing in the cup without any much pressure on them. And I think, I think, yeah, I think we'll probably beat you. I, I'd, I think my gut is 2-0. I've, I've already got a 2-0 bet on. Uh, so, yeah, I think we're going to probably beat you 2-0. But um, like, I, like I said, last time I was on the on the show a couple of weeks ago, I think whoever wins this fixture, I think then at that point becomes a real dark horse for the competition. I really do. Confident stuff though, mate. Um, excellent stuff. Remember to go ahead and uh, check out the Boyne cast if you are a Baggers fan. If you haven't already, check them out. Go over there to find them all your good podcasts and sites. Um, Josh, let's hope it's not another meeting in two weeks' time um, for the third time in a month. But big thanks for joining us, mate. No worries. Cheers for having me on. Excellent stuff. And remember to go ahead and leave your predictions for our FA Cup fifth round tie, our visit to the Hawthorns. Leave us your likes, your comments and subscribe for more.